Hello and welcome to HealthQuest, dedicated to nutrition and your good health. Support for HealthQuest has been provided by some of America's best nutritional companies. And now, HealthQuest, with your host, Steve Lankford. Hello, and welcome back to HealthQuest Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Lankford. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you're here. This is going to be another interesting exploration for me. One, because I'm going to be talking about a new ingredient for me and for you as my listeners. We're going to be talking with Jay Hook. Jay is a technical consultant for Vesta Ingredients. And we had a recent interview with him when we talked about a nutrient called beta-glucan. Well, today we're going to talk about an ingredient called fucoidin. This is a very interesting nutrient. I've heard about it. I've heard that it has some benefits for immunity, but that's really about all I know. So when I got a chance to interview Jay on the topic of fucoidin, I jumped at it. Now, remember, this is a raw material. This is a trademark, branded, clinically studied raw material. The manufacturer, Vesta Ingredients, they make these raw materials to specifications that then meet the needs of supplement manufacturers. We're looking to understand the value of these clinically studied products because oftentimes other products in the marketplace don't have the same level of pedigree. That's why we always want to look closely at the companies who make these ingredients that end up in the supplements that we use. So it's in that capacity that I'm pleased to introduce to you once again, Jay Hook. Jay, thanks for being my guest on HealthQuest today. Thanks for having me. This is going to be totally new for me. Other than, you know, the brief materials that I've seen, I don't know much about this product or its application. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I just want to mention to our listeners as well, if you want to know a little bit more about Jay or the company, his history, you can look back at our previous interview and you can get all of that in the interview. In this case, we're just going to forge right in, and I'm going to ask you, Jay, to give us a primer, a beginning understanding of this ingredient called fucoidin. Sure. Fucoidin is naturally occurring complex sulfated polysaccharide, and this is a very long-winded way of saying this type of polymer sugar that naturally occurs within various different plants and photosynthesizing organisms, including seaweed and brown algae. And historically, actually, this particular functional ingredient, which is embedded within seaweed, has been long incorporated into traditional Chinese medicine over 2,000 years to sort of treat a range of different ailments. And furthermore, fucoidin in the form of brown seaweed has been a major component of the diets of people in Japan who have been pretty well known to have one of the highest life expectancy rates. So it really wasn't until recently that modern science finally caught up. And through these past millennia, Fucoidin has really been serendipitously utilized to benefit many people. But it wasn't until now we finally understand the mechanism of how it works. And to that end, here at Vesta, utilizing the underlying science showing that these sulfated polysaccharide form of fucoidin, which is the active component of seaweed that provided all the benefit towards a lot of Eastern countries, is really the the bioactive component that we've since gone through and enriched for in our product, ultra fucoidin. And just glossing over some of the major health benefits that have been shown include its functional role as an antioxidant, as well as some promising cognitive protective function, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, and antiviral activity. In fact, there are now over 2,000 scientific publications and studies with a steady year-over-year increase in number of publications coming out. And of course, the actual most significant finding with respect to fucoidin is the proven function of fucoidin with respect to its immunomodulatory effect. 
This is one of the things that we really need to explore is its effects on the immune system. But you've mentioned a couple of other things. And in the literature that I received, they talk about some other things like wound healing and recovery and something for gastric health. And I just want to mention here this pretty standard disclaimer that I make for my listeners. We want to understand that when we're talking about the science of nutrition and what these scientific studies have shown, and we're reporting on those studies, that doesn't make a nutrient a drug. It simply illustrates the potential benefit to human health in nutrition, as opposed to drugs. Nutrients are not drugs. Drugs aren't nutrients. We need to separate in our minds what we're actually trying to accomplish. And so when we talk about these things with Jay as we go forward, please keep that in mind, that we're talking about the nutritional benefits of this unique product. Now, you brought up a lot there that raises questions in my mind. So let me just start at the beginning. You talked about seaweed being a part of diets for centuries, if not millennia. Would that suggest that benefits have been observed by the use of these plants, by the peoples that incorporated them, and that that use probably had traditional medicinal or health benefits observed, and that then sometimes leads us into the study of a product. Do you know how the interest in this as a nutraceutical resource emerged? Is that something that we look at as its use in the diet and traditional uses first? Absolutely. And originally, I think it was more of the inquisitive nature of a lot of the early scientists, I think in the early 80s into the 90s, who did initially observe this dietary health benefit that was observed at from a macro level in a lot of these retrospective analyses, looking at a lot of multiple studies, looking at a multitude of sampling of people's diets within these different cultures. And one of the prevailing common themes seemed to be the seaweed portion of their diet that seemed to also correlate but certainly at that time did not have an inference of causality, but correlate with a lot of these life longevity and other primary endpoints of human health. It was really around the early since in the 90s, a lot of these scientists then started to pursue, what well, could this actually be a causal element? And so what are the mechanisms of action in which seaweed is providing these health benefits? And some of the earliest studies included Nakamura and colleagues in Japan, where they found that fucoidin has a pro-immunomodulatory effect by gently activating macrophages through scavenger receptors and recognized through the sulfated portion of the fucoidin that is within seaweed. Further mechanistic studies, a lot of these being preclinical, showed that fucoidin helps activate these macrophages through a couple of molecular pathways called P38, MAP kinase, and NF-kappa-beta signaling. And so these are two really well-known biochemical processes known to help rev up our immune system. And so in that way, they found that, or at least inferred at that point, that the actual component of seaweed that provided this health benefit for all those hundreds or thousands of years was the fucoidin molecule. That comes from a lot of research, does it not? One of the things that always interests me when I look into a product like this is the amount of science and the amount of research, because what it suggests to me is that we start with this observation. Well, maybe this aspect of the diet is somewhat responsible, and then through looking at that, oh, there's encouraging results. So then we go further and deeper. And the fact that we have significant amounts of study that have led to this point would suggest there's very good reason behind the enthusiasm. We don't do lots and lots of studies and spend lots of money if we're not getting promising results. Would that be a fair assessment of what leads to the end result where we are today? Yes. That's sort of the beauty of all these uh, sort of unbiased approaches of doing primary research 
that if it's not efficacious, then that's fine. Typically, those molecules or components of nutraceuticals typically get shelved. However, in the case of beneficial nutraceuticals such as fucoidin, you can actually see the trajectory of popularity in, with respect to its efficacy in true science because, once again, year over year, there's been an approximate 3 to 5% increase in number of publications and studies that have been coming out. So there's quite a bit of excitement around it. Yes, and those studies have to be showing results that get people excited. And we'll turn to those in just a second. I want to get some of these other foundational questions addressed. You mentioned that fucoidin is a polysaccharide. Polysaccharides get mentioned a lot as being the source of benefits of many different foods and plants and herbs. Could you explain in layman's terms what a polysaccharide is and kind of what its commonality is in plants? Are we seeing this as one of the main sources of benefits throughout the plant kingdom? Yes, absolutely. This is the same concept we discussed from our prior conversation about the immune-boosting effects of beta-glucan in our product, Beta Immune Shield. And a variety of these polysaccharides, as you aptly mentioned, naturally occur in species of plants as well as other photosynthesizing organisms. And given that it's a vast majority of plant polysaccharides are relatively non-toxic and don't cause significant side effects, and yet at the same time, it seems to have this sort of modulatory activating role, it kind of serves as this really beneficial product. So Fucoidin, much like beta-glucan, is another one of these polysaccharides and has been shown in clinical application to have immunomodulatory and immune-boosting effects. And so, as I mentioned earlier, some of the primary in vitro studies initially indicated this, whereby fucoidin with a sulfated specific portion seems to trigger and serve as these pathogen-associated molecular patterns or PAMPs. So these PAMPs can turn on the immune system to increase surveillance through what they call toll-like receptors. So TLR for short, TLR4, 2, and 3, as well as Manos receptor and the other receptor I mentioned earlier called scavenger receptor, helps trigger and wake up the immune system so that they're more alert and ready to fight off or ward off any intruding pathogen. Well, when we look at something like the beta-glucan that we discussed in our previous interview and compare it to, say, fucoidin, do they exert their benefits in the same way one is comparable to the other? Or do they exert their benefits in unique ways? And then if that's the case, might we benefit from using more than one source, such as beta-glucan and fucoidin? By and large, the primary mode of action seems to largely be the same, whereby, again, these polysaccharides serve as these pathogen-associated molecular patterns that gently wake up the immune system. However, there is some recent research indicating that different polysaccharides will trigger different toll-like receptors on different immune cells and elicit very subtle but meaningful differences with respect to the activation of the immune system. However, we certainly should not get ahead of ourselves and we're certainly uh, entering into suppositional territory whereby this idea hasn't been fully vetted from the scientific end. So although, yes, you are correct, there are these subtle differences, I think still the jury's still out with respect to what sort of efficacy and subtle differences that each of these different polysaccharides might have for the end users. Well, then that might suggest to me perhaps a couple different strategies. Somebody who maybe is looking for a specific benefit and by looking at the studied benefits of fucoidin may say, this sounds like a good fit for what I would like to try. And conversely, somebody might say the same thing about beta-glucan. So people could experiment based on, say, what studies have been done. In any case, they're going to get some naturally immune-supporting effects from either one. So it's not that they're going to make a wrong choice, but they could experiment between products and potentially even take them both. Is that a possibility? 
Yeah, absolutely. Hit the nail on the head. Well, that's what I do. I try to understand these challenges because I know these are questions that consumers face in the marketplace. Well, should I choose this product or should I choose that product? So what we're here to do is help them understand the role of this ingredient called fucoidin. And then particularly the brand made by Vesta Ingredients called Ultra Fucoidin. So this is actually then the raw material that Vesta has created as a result of looking at the science and then bringing this product to the marketplace for supplement manufacturers to use in their products. So before we get into, say, some of the science of Fucoidin, let's just talk a little bit about what Vesta does. Why is Vesta considered one of those premier manufacturers for quality raw materials? Describe for us a little bit of their approach to bringing a product like this to market based on what their business is. How do they assure their customers of the end products? Tell us a little bit about that. Actually, Vest has been around for over 20 years, and we've really been a leader in the nutraceutical industry. And the main philosophy, before we decide to take a lot of the effort into investing into certain ingredients, we pursue it with a high degree of sincerity. And so the technical director and president of Vesta, Sam Kwan, he really implemented this philosophy and idea that we would aim for superior quality within our Vesta brand raw ingredients to ensure the success of our clients and obviously the end user. Because fundamentally, if the end user doesn't actually get the benefit of the said ingredient, well then it's certainly not sustainable with respect to being able to provide a constant stream of potential clients because unless there is true efficacy and promise behind the actual functional ingredient, it's just not largely benefiting anyone in the long term. And towards that end, Vesta takes a lot of time and energy to actually look at the scientific evidence and merit. And Essentially, once we've fully vetted a certain raw ingredient for the scientific backing, then we go through the painstaking process of spending years to find the best and safest sources of the product and then subsequently do some assay development and invest into generating proprietary extraction processes to maximize the form of functional ingredient that has been shown through research to be useful for the end user. Well, there's a lot that goes into that that I know isn't easily understood by the average consumer. You talked about the extraction method. What are those distinctions in the extraction methods that are important to you as a company and then should be important certainly to your customers, but might not be well known to the average consumer? What makes the difference in that? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, it'll vary from functional ingredient to functional ingredient. But there are certain nuanced processes in the extraction process, as well as the sourcing of the material in which you extract the functional ingredient from, that is extremely important to maximize the efficacy of the given product for the end user and for a lot of your listeners. For example, if we were to utilize ultrafucoidin, which is our trademark fucoidin raw ingredient, the best fucoidin aspect is that sulfated component that has been shown mechanistically to be the thing that actually leads to potent immune activation. We painstakingly went through in order to develop this extraction process by which we have over 25% sulfate content with the fewest amount of impurities within our product. In that way, we found through a lot of due diligence and a lot of attention to detail that if we were able to utilize this NO, hexane, ethanol, or solvent-based, if we avoid those harsh chemicals, utilizing 100% water extraction method, we're able to actually gently maximize the amount of active sulfated fucoidin without having any of those harsh impurities that are found in the conventional way of extraction. 
So it would be closer to a natural way without those solvents, which a lot of us wish to avoid. A company that does that, though, would that suggest it's not as easy to do it this way? It's more challenging, but it's the way to make a better product. Do companies use things like hexane and solvents in making products that are similar to what you're doing, but avoiding them? Does that make sense? Yeah, once again, the typical standard of extraction utilizes a lot of those harsh solvents that I mentioned. It's quite unconventional, and in that way, Vespa has been a vanguard with respect to utilizing these alternative approaches that is far more natural and more safe in some way. From our technical team, being able to go in and innovate utilizing this sort of proprietary water extraction method Again, we're able to maximize for the efficacious form of fucoidin but with avoiding a lot of those potentially toxic impurities. Let's turn our attention then to the benefits of fucoidin. Let's talk about what this list of benefits are. I've got a list on the printout that you sent me. Tell us how those benefits, what they are, and maybe a little bit about the science, how that science show these kinds of benefits. Fucoidin has been shown to have an antioxidant function as well as promising cognitive protective function as well as having some potential benefits with anti-cancer therapy. And what's really intriguing is there's several clinical trials actually currently ongoing listed on the NCT website where you can actually go and see a lot of these Fucoidin-based clinical trials that are active. Some of those health benefits are a little bit, although promising, still preliminary and need to be fully vetted. The key aspect or health benefit of fucoidin that has been pretty robustly shown, again, pertains to that immunomodulatory benefit. On that end, with these polysaccharides such as fucoidin serving as this gentle wake-up agent for the immune cell within our body to help ward off potential pathogens, there's been a lot of compelling preclinical studies that have been done both in the context of cells and preclinical in vivo models that has shown the efficacy of fucoidin to prevent inflammatory pathogens from infiltrating and really colonizing what would be those given models. That inspired a set of clinical studies looking at sort of the antiviral impact of fucoidin supplementation in humans. And a lot of those studies have shown quite a wide range of very promising results. For example, this one clinical trial looking at fucoidin orally administered on a daily basis for patients who are infected with H. pylori, which is a bacteria that sort of erodes the cut lining and causes stomach ulcers and problems. Those patients that received fucoidin through oral administration did not have any safety efficacy concern. However, what they did find is that they had a a pretty substantial overall improvement in digestive power, which is a technical endpoint looking at overall GI duress and GI function. And they, they had this pretty remarkable level of improvement after taking hoiden. Additionally, there was another set of clinical trials that were conducted pertaining to sort of viral infections And one, fucoidin was administered. It found to decrease the proviral load in a small group of patients that were found to have had been infected with human T lymphotrophic virus type 1. And finally, another clinical study that was recently conducted found that fucoidin administration in a one-month period compared to placebo control found that those patients that received the Fucoidin had prior to the seasonal influenza vaccination in season had this boost in antibody production after vaccination in some of these immunocompromised elderly patients. Those are impressive benefits. And I know, for example, that people who suffer with H. pylori oftentimes have a very big challenge trying to get that under control. It sounds to me like this idea of gently benefiting the immune system has 
a multitude of effects. Would it suggest that we take this kind of a product as a regular adjunct to our program and that we would be getting this immune system boost on an ongoing basis? Or is it to suggest that if you have a problem, this is something that you should try? Or can it be used in both ways? Sure. Just to take a step back and clarify, the products such as Recoidin are best utilized as a means of providing a prophylactic measure for some of these pathogens. However, the key thing to keep in mind is it's certainly no full substitute for those medications that are provided by and recommended to you by your physician. So just to clarify, certainly no one should just ward off their current prescription and utilize Fucoidin. Rather, as you alluded to, the supplemental addition of Fucoidin certainly beneficial in and of itself, as well as if in the chance that you are a little bit worried pre-flu season or before traveling, it might behoove you to utilize Fucoidin as sort of a preventative measure for potential future moments of risk that you foresee where you might become sick. I want to concur with you and reiterate the point that we in no way are suggesting that you treat your disease using nutritional supplements. That's what your doctor does. Work with your doctor, follow his treatments, follow his protocols. And if you're interested in employing something like this along with that, discuss that with your doctor. He's your primary caregiver. So you want to make sure that everything you do works with whatever medical treatment you're receiving. So that's always a good idea and makes sense. But it also suggests that for those who aren't under medical care, it's a safe adjunct that they can employ on a regular or as needed basis. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the kinds of dosages maybe that were used in the studies. One thing I'm always curious about is, are the doses that were used in these different studies, are they doses that are commonly available to us as supplements? What's your take on that? Yes, absolutely. So a lot of those clinical trials I had mentioned and several others utilize approximate dose of 50 to 150 milligrams per day. So that's sort of the general recommended range that's been found to be efficacious for immune response in clinical studies. And there have also actually, I want to take this time to mention that there have been preclinical studies looking at potential unwanted toxicity effects of Fucoidin. And based on body weight, urinalysis, hematology, and histopathology, There's a study that actually found that there's this really wide range in which recording can be taken and still be very safe. Although their dose range exceeds that of what's been shown to be efficacious at the 50 to 150 milligrams per day, uh, it's just reassuring to know that a lot of these polysaccharide products are highly, at least safe, within the range of recommended dosage, highly safe and highly effective. Well, that's important to know because I have to believe that for the research to continue, one of the things that we have to understand is the safety implications of something like this. And sometimes that has to be examined so that we know going forward, what are those parameters? So it makes sense that oftentimes in those studies, the doses are going to be higher than what they might be in standard usage. Now, your Fucoidin is known as Ultra Fucoidin. Would that suggest that if people were looking for your particular brand, that they're likely to see that on a label? Do supplement companies list their sources when they use your product? Yes, absolutely. Vest is pretty well known now and within the nutraceutical industry that we actually recognize the scientific merits before we extol a given product. Because we undergo a lot of painstaking efforts for quality, particularly with the way that we source the ingredients and then subsequently use innovative ways of gently extracting and maximizing the efficacious molecule, it's a point of pride for a lot of our customers that they'll feature our brand name, Ultrafucoidin, on the back of the label. Well, this is what we want people to understand is that companies like yours 
come about because of a deliberate effort to do things a certain way. And you alluded to the fact that your source materials, where you get your seaweed from, that's very particular as well. So the idea that you are looking for quality ingredients to use in your extraction process, it's all a connected chain meant to deliver benefits and confidence to the end user. So everybody's investing more in terms of getting that type of quality. And that type of quality doesn't come about by accident. It comes about by deliberate, focused attention on the things that are most important, which is not just the price. And that's what you get with cheap products is a cheaper product at a cheaper price and certainly no assurance of benefits. So if you want to avoid that, you look for products that have trademarked, branded, clinically studied ingredients. And the companies that use those ingredients, it says a lot about them as a supplement manufacturer. So when they're investing in these quality ingredients, it's because they have an interest in delivering an effective product to the end user. So this can't be underestimated. And those of us who really look into this and care about it know that it's not always the case. And a lot of people are going to get some inferior or poor quality or maybe even adulterated products if they don't pay attention to what companies do and how they do it, and where those raw materials actually come from. I'm such a big proponent of that. I want to make sure our listeners always hear that message, because if they don't, then they have just no way of knowing. So that's my little soapbox interjection there. I want to wrap up by just covering these benefits again. I'm going to read off these six benefits that are on the Vesta materials and then ask you to comment on any of them. Here's what it says. Eliminates free radicals through strong antioxidant properties. You covered that. Supports a healthy immune system. Covered that. Reduce blood lipids. We didn't address that yet. Supports wound healing. Helps to speed recovery from illness and provides gastric protection, which we mentioned there. It would suggest to me that this is a nutrient that the body can utilize in many different ways. And these are some of the end results of the body's natural processes using an ingredient. When it has what it needs, it can do amazing things. Discuss any of those that you think we should hear about. Sure, absolutely. The point about the influence of the coitin on lipid health the way that it's been shown, Fucoidin actually reduces the lipid accumulation by stimulating lipolysis, which is essentially the process of degrading lipids that our body kind of undergoes. And Fucoidin has been shown to enhance that process by which our body is able to turn over lipid. Just a point of clarity, lipids are obviously just another name for fats. And you can imagine given that saturated fats having all sorts of problems on the health and causing unwanted inflammation, glucordins can be utilized to prevent or treat obesity by its stimulation of lipolysis, or again, that breakdown of lipids. However, a lot of that work is still preliminary and ongoing with respect to the validation efforts. And as you alluded to, the point that product like Fucoidin seems to have these multifactorial benefits for the end user or the consumer. And the scientific process of that is sort of deemed as pleiotropy, whereby a single agent can have all sorts of independent, unique ways in which it benefits our health. And then in aggregate, you get this overall benefit that we may not have initially anticipated with respect to its initial assumption because, again, the history of Fucoidin being that it provided sort of these benefits that were traced in those meta-studies looking at the dietary behavior of certain communities in Japan compared to Western nations, basically, were able to find the end point of longer health and longer lives that were reaped with respect to benefit. And it's just really more recent that science is really catching up and uncovering all these benefits that were provided by Fucoidin in the form of seaweed that 
the Japanese had long been benefiting from for centuries. Well, as you describe that, that is one of the confusing aspects for some people is how is it that these nutrients exert all of these different benefits? And as you were describing that, I thought of an example, vitamin C. If we didn't have vitamin C, we know what happens. We get scurvy and all kinds of things go wrong when we don't have an, that adequate essential nutrient. And when we have that essential nutrient and when we have it in abundance and in the amount that the body needs, all kinds of things can improve by simply giving the body what it needs to function. So I look at this as perhaps not an essential nutrient like vitamin C, but certainly as a nutrient that the body has the ability to appropriate. And when it has that nutrient, the body is very efficient and will use it in as many ways as in its wisdom it needs. And therefore, we can see these benefits in other areas because of this ubiquitous presence in the body and the body's utilization of it. And I'm sure the research is going to articulate other benefits as we go forward. So this is a very exciting nutrient and something that people can certainly look more closely to, to achieve some of the things that are important to us, such as a healthy immune system and antioxidant benefits and so on. So Jay, we're getting very near the end of our time. I, one more question. Are there any warnings? or contraindications for anybody that needs to know about fucoidin? In the case of fucoidin, luckily there aren't. So in that way, it's been shown to be highly safe and efficacious. That's a simple enough answer and makes it very easy to understand. Well, as always, Jay, I want to give my guests a last word. Is there anything that we didn't cover today that you want to make sure that our listeners hear? Yeah, it's nothing necessarily new, but reiterate the idea that we really went global when we went to look for the source of our fucoidin. And in that painstaking process of searching for the most pristine source, we stumbled upon a couple species, Laminaria and Eudaria, that naturally grow in unpolluted Korean ocean waters. And for that very reason, we really honed in on extracting fucoidin from these non-GMO, naturally occurring species that really thrive in this clean body of water that's unpolluted. That, in combination with our proprietary approaches of utilizing gentle, natural water extraction method, we really take pride in that we went through all these step-by-step ways of quality controlling and maximizing the best sulfate content of fucoidin so that in the end, ultra-fucoidin, we can stand up confidently and say is one of the top quality and best fucoidin products on the market. Well, that's the reason that we're here, Jay, is because we are always looking to identify those companies and those raw materials that set these kinds of standards. So when people want to know who can they trust, at least we've given them a little bit of a foundation to understand why Vesta Ingredients and Vesta Fucoidin, Ultra Fucoidin, and the Beta Immune Shield, Beta Glucan, why those are important ingredients and they can feel confident when they see them on a product and they can feel confident in the companies that use those raw materials. So it's been a great interview, Jay. So Jay Hook, I'd like to thank you once again for being my guest today. It's most interesting and I look forward to any opportunity that we have to speak. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. If you would like additional information, please visit healthquestpodcast.com. We've provided additional details and links on the podcast page. Remember, this is your process of discovery. Continue to search, continue to learn. The more you know, the better choices you can make. Better choices lead to better outcomes. If you like healthquestpodcast.com, please recommend us to your friends and social networks. We sincerely appreciate every like, every star, and every review. Together, we can lead others to better health one listener at a time. Thank you for joining me today. I'm glad you were here. Make it a good day and join me for another interesting HealthQuest podcast. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining us today on HealthQuest. You want to improve your health? HealthQuest can help. For more information and interviews that help you, visit healthquestpodcast.com.